Hello everyone, Shabna Watson here. In this video, I want to show you how to use Power Apps with Microsoft Fabric Warehouse as a data source. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to use a Power Apps visual in a Power BI report that's working with a Microsoft Fabric Warehouse as its data source to update the data and then reflect the results back into the Power BI reports in near real time. I have previously blogged about a topic very similar to this when the data source is SQL Server or Azure SQL Database, and I'll have a link to that in the comment section of this video for your reference. However, today I want to focus on the warehouse from Microsoft Fabric because in order to get the Power Apps to work with the warehouse, whether it's in Power BI or independently, you have to do things a little bit differently. And that's what I want to show you. So let's go and take a look. Let's start by looking at how Power Apps works with Azure SQL database. Here on the screen, you can see that I've built a report off of an Azure SQL database. The model behind this report is in direct query. That's because we want to be able to see the changes that are made to the back end immediately reflected in the report. So if I update a value in the back end and then hit this refresh, visuals icon here, I'm going to see the results immediately. This is what we want the Power Apps to do in this particular use case. So we want it to update the back end and then refresh the page. So let's give it a try first. So I'm going to go and update this first record and give it a couple of extra zeros and then also change the category to road bikes too. Now, when I hit save, I expect the values to be updated and a page refresh to be triggered for me without me clicking on that icon on the top corner of the screen. So let's do that. One, two, three, here we go. And there we go. So you see that the data got updated and then we have the results back on the screen immediately. So let's take a quick look at how this Power Apps is created. If I go here and click on edit, this will take me to Power Apps Studio, which I have open here already. The app has two screens. The first screen has a gallery control on it, which shows one record per row of the data in that table. The gallery is receiving its items from Power BI integration data. So we are receiving our items from Power BI. And then when someone clicks on this navigation icon here on the Chevron, the parent is selected and the parent is actually the gallery. So when someone selects the gallery, what happens is that we will create a new form that's on the second screen and then we will navigate to the second screen. On the second screen, we have a form and a form has two important properties. One is its data source and that is where the form knows how to save data to. So even though we are getting the data from Power BI, we still need to set the data source to the table that we want to write the results to. And I've done this by going to the connections and creating connection to the exact same table that my Power BI model is based off of. Once I have that, then this form knows how to write data back. If I click on this icon here that already comes with a form, you can see that there's a function here called submit form and that will generate SQL to the back end and will update the results. After that, I have added these other two functions. So the first one is to trigger a page refresh. So we want to refresh all the visuals. And because our model is in direct query, we're going to see the numbers reflected back immediately. And then we want to navigate back to the previous screen of our application. So the form knows where to save data to, but how does it get its values pre-populated? So we want to be able to navigate from the gallery to the form with the values pre-populated so that you don't have to enter everything from scratch again. The way we do that is by setting the item property of the form to gallery one selected, and then everything gets pre-populated. And finally, if someone changes their mind when they get here, they click on the X, we go back. Now, when you have made your application in Power Apps, then you want to save it and you want to publish it so that other people in, in your organization also have access to it. When you have done all of this, when you go back to your Power BI report, the Power Apps visual will load the app that you just built and then you can save your report and you're done. So this works beautifully with Azure SQL database, with Dataverse and 
on-prem SQL server. So I tried to do the same thing with a fabric warehouse. So let me show you the fabric warehouse first. So I created a fabric warehouse and I loaded some data into it. Before I show you the data, please note that whenever you create a fabric warehouse, it comes with a default Power BI semantic model that its storage mode is indirectly. Now we'll get to that one at the end of this video, but to get started, what I want to do is create my report off of a direct query model that's based off of this data warehouse. So even though we are in fabric, we still can create a model that its storage mode is indirect query. So in order to get to that SQL connection to build my direct query model off of, I can go here to the settings and I can get this connection string from here. So I've used this connection string to build a direct query model off of the exact same table that you saw in my Azure SQL database. And I've created an app exactly the same way. So let's go ahead and try this and see what happens. So I'm going to click on the first card and give this a couple extra zeros and update the category and then click on this submit item to see what happened. Here we go and we get an error. So let me show you what happens when you issue a submit item or patch function from Power Apps. Behind the scenes, Power Apps will use SB Execute SQL system store procedure to run the update command in a form that's similar to what you see on the screen. So it gives it the value to be updated. It gives it the where clause. But what's important here to take a look at is this output clause here. So at the moment, the output clause is not supported in Fabric Warehouse, and that's the source of this error. Thankfully, Power Apps allows us to call a stored procedure, and that's what I've done here. I've created a stored procedure that updates my table. So here's take two of a report that's built off of the same direct query model from the warehouse, but this time the app is different. So let me show you how it works. Let's go ahead and update the value here. So we're gonna give it a couple extra zeros and update the category and then click on save. There he goes. So let's take a look at this app here. On the first screen, we are exactly like the other application. We have a gallery that's receiving its items from Power BI data. On the second screen, I have added my own controls. So instead of an edit form here, I have added text boxes and text inputs and a button control here. And for these text boxes to show values like the form did, all I had to do was to say gallery one selected. And then if I put a dot, I'm going to get the IntelliSense and the list of the columns. So again, when you get to the second screen, values are pre-populated. If you click on X, we go back. And if you click on save, that's where the magic is. So we know that we can run a stored procedure. This is the code that's going to run a stored procedure. So let me show you the code. The way you run a stored procedure is by using this function called clear collect. This is actually going to create a collection in Power Apps that can hold results. In our case, we don't care about the results in this particular update stored procedure. We just want to run it. So this is a way to run a stored procedure. So we give it the name of a collection and then followed by the name of the stored procedure. And if you have made the connection properly, as soon as you put the parentheses, you get a list of the parameters coming back here. So when you run a stored procedure afterwards, we're going to do the same thing we did with the other app, which is refresh the Power BI page and then navigate back. This first command that you see here, that's just best practice. And anytime you're using a collection, it's best practice to clear it out so that we're not adding values to it. Again, in our case, it doesn't matter because we're not really returning any values, but following best practice, I always add that in my code. So how do we get this to work? In order for this to work, you have to make a connection because remember our form was connected to a table, but here we don't have a form. So how do we get that connection to work? The way you do that is to go to data and add a new connection, which I've 
done here already, but I'm going to show you how to do that again from scratch. So you're going to click on add data, go to connectors, choose SQL server and click on add connection. And here you can enter your credentials. So because we are going to a fabric warehouse, I'm going to choose Microsoft Entra ID integrated. And that will take me to the next screen where I'm going to put in my connection string. And the connection string is what I showed previously from the warehouse. So we are going to the SQL endpoint of the warehouse and I'm going to give it the name of my warehouse and then click on connect. So when we connect, we can choose a table or we can choose a store procedure. And that's what I've done. So I've selected this one and clicked on connect. I'm not going to do that here because I've already done it and I have my connection here built in. But once you do this, then in your save button code, you can reference it in here and you know, it's working because if you put a dot in here, it will pop up and then it's going to also bring back the list of your parameters properly. So that's it for the power app in Power BI using a model that's built off of the SQL connection of a fabric warehouse. So the last thing I want to show you is a report that's built off of the direct lake model of a warehouse. If you remember, if I go back to the warehouse, you see that I have a semantic model built for me. So whether you're building a report off of this semantic model or a custom semantic model that's in direct lake, things are a little bit different. Different. Let me go back to the Power BI report and show you. In this Power BI report, if I update a value using my Power App, it will update the backend without any issues by calling the stored procedure. So that's not a problem. When it goes to trigger Power BI page refresh, that part works also. It's not a problem. However, in order to get the results back from the direct lake model with SQL, there is a delay of about 30 seconds or so. If I run this, then even though I'm going to trigger page refresh, I'm not going to see the changes reflected back immediately. And again, that may or may not matter in your use case, but if it is something that matters in your use case, you want to wait for the results to come back. What you can do is you can introduce a wait time into your power apps. So I've done that by taking inspiration from what Kristen Rifty has done recently. A couple of days ago, he published a blog about how to do right back to the warehouse using Power Apps. He used a different method. He uses a Power Automate. However, there is something interesting at the end, which is what I took my inspiration for the next part from, and that is how to build in a wait time. Because if you don't wait for that wait time of about 30 seconds or so, you refresh the page, the values that's just updated, they're not displaying it. Okay, so we want to introduce a wait. So he uses the modern spinner control and walks you through how to do that, how to set up a wait time. And then my other inspiration was this video by Shane Young on how to use the power apps timer control. So let me go here and run this app. So again, I'm going to update this and set the category and then click on save and see what happens. So now what I do is that I pop up an image in here. I disable the save button and I give this about 35 seconds. Um, I have a timer going in the back end. And when that timer finishes, then I will refresh the page. And by that time, hopefully the changes have taken effect and we can see the results. There we go. So let me switch to power apps and show you what's going on. So again, we have the first screen exactly like before. So second screen, the fields are exactly like before. I have a timer control in here that is invisible. I use this timer to measure a duration of 35 seconds. So the timer, its duration is set to 35 seconds. This is in milliseconds. So that's my timer. And then when someone clicks on the save button, the code has some extra lines in here. So what I do is that I display my image. So there's also an image. I display an image. So I set a parameter or a variable to true that it, it's used by the visibility property of the image. I set active property of the button to false. So I'm just setting these two variables. Then I go and run the exact same code as before, but I don't do the Power BI page refresh from here. I reset my timer and I set a property that gets my timer going. So at this point, I've done my store procedure execution and then I kickstart my timer by running this code. 
And on the timer, I have set an on end property. When the timer ends, that's when I reset my values and I call the Power BI integration refresh, and then I navigate to the previous. So by doing these, you can get the image to pop up and then hide. And then we go back to the previous screen and the image itself. I can toggle it visible because it's visibility property is controlled by a formula. So it's visible is set by that show progress image variable that I set when we clicked on the save icon. So that's a summary of how you can use power apps visual in a power BI to interact with a Microsoft fabric warehouse. This does not have to be inside a power BI report. You can use the exact same method independently outside of Power BI to write to a Microsoft Fabric warehouse. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and like and follow the channel for future videos.